Welcome back. There's a saying that if you have your health, you have everything. But sometimes, even with insurance, accessing the right care and understanding what care you need can be a challenge. Fortunately, it's a challenge Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin is meeting head on. Nothing is more important than your health, and the folks here at Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin are doing everything they can to make sure people have access to quality health care, no matter where you live or whatever pre-existing medical conditions you might have. Having coordinated care is key to living a life that is long, happy, and healthy. Joining me now to talk more about this is Dr. Mark Lotus. He is the Vice President and Chief Medical Officer population health and medical education here at Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Thank you for having us here today. Great to be here with you. What does health equity mean to you? Well, at its most fundamental and as a physician, I'm bored in internal medicine and pediatrics, it really means giving the best possible care and getting the best possible outcomes for each of my patients. From a population health standpoint, it really means doing that for all of our communities and for all of our patients that are in the broader community and seek care with us. So it, this really aligns closely to our mission and to our commitment to uh, enhancing health equity and to eradicating racism. Um, that racism piece we think is a really important part of the mission and seeing health disparities improve. Um, we break that down really into structural racism and, um, and then our people and how we uh, enhance our people to really interact with every person with dignity and, and respect. Um, I often get this quizzical look when, um, when I say structural racism. People say, you know, they kind of lean in a little bit and ask, well, what do you mean by that? And so um, I'll give you a, a, a hypothetical here. Imagine a community in which there's 30 breast cancer screening locations in a given community. I'm not talking about Milwaukee here, a hypothetical right. community. And um, those 30 centers are, are open from eight to five, Monday through Friday, and available to the whole of the community. But now imagine I, I tell you that five of those, only five of them are accessible by public transportation. And now imagine I say of those five, four of the five have technology that's older, that doesn't have the state of the art digital mammography or, um, or 3D mammography available. All of a sudden, we've introduced a structural component in which folks who have privilege of having a car and having transportation can get to any of the centers who may have a job that allows them to take time off work with paid time. But those individuals that are, taking the, are reliant on the public transportation, on the subway or the bus, or who can't take that time off work may not have access to the services in the same way. And if, even if they do access them, may not have the same level of technology available to them if they need that added technology for their exam. So we've introduced a structural piece. So we're, we're committed at Freighter Medical College to overcoming those structural issues that are present. And then at the same time, for our people per, um, perspective, to having um, dignity and respect for every one of our patients that comes through the door to really promoting us looking at our biases, understanding what all of our personal biases are and how we mitigate those, to making sure our policies and procedures follow all that, um, and that at the end of the day, what it feels like is that you can access us and get great care with us regardless of your background, your race, your ethnicity, um, your, your gender identity, you know, everyone in the community has that access. So for, for patients then, when it comes to their everyday care, that means not just knowing that quality health care exists, but really being able to literally access that. Clinics that are closer, more uh, hours that may be open. Th that's, that's exactly right. And um, we're working together to really identify what those steps are that we can take to improve that access. Some of it's geographic, um, some of it may be um, transportation related, right? Some of it may be education related. I don't know that I'm supposed to have the screening done. And now that I know and I'm educated, I understand why I'm willing to come and do that. Um, some of it's economic, right? Um, we know that um, social determinants of health are a big factor in these barriers. 
And we also understand that many of the social determinants of, of health are the primary drivers of health outcomes. So what I do, we'd like to think in healthcare that everything we do in kind of delivering mammographies and colon cancer screening and treatments, that this represents like the majority of health outcomes, like how healthy you are or communities are. But in reality, that's only 20%. It's only 20% of health outcomes. So our, our health outcomes are tied to healthcare delivery. The rest of it is all the other things that involve health, like whether you're a smoker or not, whether or not you maintain a healthy weight, whether you have access to healthy foodstuffs, fresh fruits and vegetables, and all of those types of things, whether your environment is clean. We know that, that, uh, that, our, um, that many of our patients live in communities that have water, air quality issues, all the rest. And it's much different in affluent communities compared to uh, communities of lower socioeconomic status. So all of these other things play a role. So we view kind of our role in healthcare in delivering that healthcare product, but in also being a force toward that broader community goal of trying to create safer, healthier communities. Those are really, in some cases, very large barriers that healthcare can't always control. So how do you work then with patients, with communities to address those issues that are not always within our control um, and that, that we can, even though we know that being able to control them or at least influence them makes a difference in how healthy people are? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, as, you know, as an academic health system, we're really committed to education as one of our missions. So I think first and foremost is educating communities on the issues surrounding health equity. If, um, if there's not that knowledge, then it's hard to be an advocate for that change. Um, so that education piece is a big part, both to our patients directly as well as to the community. I think from there, then it becomes, how can we together, Frederick Medical College is one of the allies to the work, really promote the development of healthy communities, of economic revitalization. Um, so some ways that we can do that, we're more than just the deliverer of healthcare too. We buy services from lots of different companies throughout the region, right? We buy supplies for all of it to deliver healthcare. And so um, having that supplier diversity is a big part of what we do too. Um, trying to, and I'm really proud of what the organization's done over the last 20 years in really making sure that we're buying as much as we can from diverse suppliers, right? So that elevates that base of, of economic you know, uh, uh, equality and contributes to that within the community. The other places we're a big, we're a big employer too. And um, you know, those that aren't in healthcare, it may, it may come as a surprise, but I don't think it will come as much of a surprise that we're, we're in a crisis of finding enough people to deliver healthcare. And it's not just, it's not just those that are trained in um, you know, providing care in our teams. It's also folks who, who support this whole infrastructure, from our environmental services and food services to our, um, you know, to our support services administratively. And so um, really working with the community to train individuals to come into a really life-sustaining wage and benefits with our health system and to choose a career in healthcare, real opportunity for us too. And it's another way that we view our ability to enhance equity within the community. So this push towards equity in healthcare is about so much more than, even though that is, is important, where clinics are located, is really is looking at what the community's needs are in a very holistic way and yes. working to address those, even in ways as you've just described, that some people don't think of as being healthcare related. That's right, that's right. And you know, as a, as a very big employer, you know, more than just with um, Freighter Health side alone, more than 10,000 you know, employees, we um, very much view that employment piece and that cultivation of healthcare careers as, um, as, as core to the, to the work that we do. Um, as, we, as we look at addressing some of those structural barriers and access to care, I can give you a few examples of some things sure, we're doing. So, so we've been working on, um, and we've been focusing on, we said, boy, if we can't focus on our own population that calls us their medical home, that comes and gets their primary care and most of their specialty care service with us. If we can't get it right from a health equity standpoint for that group, it's gonna be hard for us to get it right for the whole of the community for, for individuals that may or may not have a relationship with us. Um, so we have a gap of somewhere between six and 10% between our white population and our BIPOC 
we, we've created a BIPOC A population, which black indigenous people, people of color, and our Asian population. We have a big Hmong community, Filipino community. So we, we've looked at that group and looked at the rates of things like breast cancer screening, colorectal cancer screening, and pneumonia vaccine. And we have somewhere between a six to 10% gap with our white population having a, a, a better profile or better gap closure, uh, better compliance with those measures than our BIPOC A population. And we asked statistically, why is that? What are the factors that are underlying that? We did a pretty complete analysis and saw a whole variety of factors, social determinants of health, economics, insurance, uh, uh, a uh, whole, whole variety of factors that were affecting that. And then we've tried to put into place solutions that are gonna address that. We talked to our patients and asked them, how do these solutions sound and how can we co-design this with you and the community? And it, it seems like the more success you have with that, two things can happen. One, you take a look at other opportunities that you might be able to create. And secondly, you engage more partners. So you have more people who are really working with you very closely on the issue of healthcare equity. You do, you do. And you know, you, th you know, sometimes we think of this health equity as, as, as uh, you know, kind of the yin, yin or the yang. It's one or the other. It's a Boolean thing that basically you're not getting the services or you are, and we're focusing on the people who aren't getting the services. But it's actually a little more complex than that because some people are accessing the services, but they're doing it with extraordinary effort. They have barriers that they are just, they are spending time, effort, toil to try to get that done in an extraordinary way. And they're accomplishing it despite the fact that we haven't had the kind of convenience or the kind of equity that we wanna have within the services. So not only are we bringing more people into those screenings, but we're making it easier on a lot of folks that are having a really hard time struggling to get the services today. You all are doing some really great things to do that kind of, of outreach. But as individuals, we have some responsibilities for our own health care. What are the, some of the recommendations that you would make for us as individuals to make sure that we're maximizing the efforts that we're making and the opportunities that exist to make sure we stay healthy? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I stress is having a primary care physician. And as a primary care physician, maybe that is a little self-serving, but uh, I will say that you know, having that quarterback, you know, it's hard to have a, you know, football offense without a quarterback. Um, you know, someone to kind of help you to navigate through um, those challenges and to identify those things that are recommended for you at your given stage in life or age in life or conditions that you have. So having that quarterback is important. The second is to understand um, those standard screening items and standard immunizations and things that generally everyone needs, you know, that we need on a population basis to keep us healthy. And, um, and um, understand when those are necessary that you're availing your, yourself of those. Um, you know, we're coming up on a flu season here. You know, we haven't seen flu the way that we've seen flu in the past right. because of the pandemic. We also have a lot of young people and children that have never really been exposed to the flu before as a result of that, young children that grew up in the pandemic. And so we think the, the, the environment is just in the milieu is right right now that there might be a, a little bit of a wall up here with this upcoming flu season. So um, everyone get out there, get that flu shot. I, um, it's going to be an important thing as we get in the season. Hopefully we can mitigate that too, even in the throes of the ongoing COVID pandemic that we're seeing. Well, good advice. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here with us and having us here at Freighter. Dr. Mark Lotus is the vice president and medical director for, or chief medical officer for population health and medical education here at Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Thanks so much. Great advice. Thank you so much, it was my pleasure. Small businesses create more than half of all new jobs in the United States. When we return, we'll learn about how U.S. Bank is helping small businesses, especially those owned by women and people of color, to navigate unique challenges in order to thrive.